So my name is Allison Malcolm. I'm an assistant professor of geophysics, um, and I study seismic waves and how seismic waves interact with materials in the Earth. Um, so a sort of simple example of how seismic waves interact with materials in the Earth is um, the Earth is mostly a layered structure. Um, and you can think of how the waves interact with the boundaries of those layers. It's quite similar to how light interacts with a mirror. So a seismic wave is a sound wave, but, um, or it's like a sound wave. It's at different frequencies. Um, but it's like a sound wave, and some of the sound is reflected from those interfaces and comes back to the surface, and other parts of, and, and some of the sound is transmitted through the interfaces. Um, and so in a simple structure, you can use exactly that, where the reflections come from, to find where the layer boundaries are. So I work in situations where the earth is, where the layering is no longer a good approximation. And so we try and understand how we can infer um, earth structures um, from the waves that travel through them. And so I'm particularly interested in how we can exploit signals from multiply scattered waves. So waves that reflect many times instead of just once in the, in the subsurface. And what they tell us about seismic wave speed, what they tell us about fractures, and what they tell us about um, uh, general structures in the earth. Um, and this work has applications to energy, so geothermal energy um, is one application. Um, petroleum and the location of petroleum reserves is another application. And then on a sort of broader scale, I don't work specifically with earthquake applications, but any information that we can use uh, to understand how waves propagate through the earth helps us understand how the waves generated by earthquakes propagate through the earth, which is of course important for a myriad of societal problems or societal issues, if you like, from building to everything else. I had been interested in physics and math when I was um, at, in high school and also an undergraduate, um, but I found that conventional physics was difficult to get a handle on because everything is either so large, like astrophysics, or so small, like particle physics. And I was more interested in something that was a little bit in between. And so that led me to geophysics. Um, and then the fact that I also had still a strong interest in, in mathematics kind of led me to seismology and in particular to seismic imaging. Um, you know, partly happenstance um, from the um, faculty members where, when I was an undergraduate um, and, and partly, you know, by design that, that I just found those, those problems most interesting. I'm working most closely on a couple of problems. The first is um, I've been kind of interested in methods that they use in medical imaging where they mix two different types of signal. So it could be two different wave signals or an electric signal and a wave signal. To when the idea behind the methods is to combine the high contrast of one method, so where different materials have very different properties, with a high resolution of another method. So seismology is your classic high resolution method, but there are situations and oil versus water is one such situation, or contaminant versus water, um, where the seismic properties are not that different, but the electrical properties, for example, might be a lot different. And so I'm, I'm working um, with, it, with a postdoc and a number of other MIT scientists to try and uh, adapt some of those techniques to be used in earth imaging. And so we're doing some little lab experiments and, and so forth right now with that. Um, the other thing that I'm interested in is really using multiply scattered waves, and by that I mean waves that are scattered many, many, many times in the subsurface, and trying to infer the density of scatterers or the density of scattering strength as a function of position. And the reason that I'm interested in that is that scattering is strongly correlated to fractures, and fractures are very important for geothermal energy, for um, shale gas, um, and for all sorts of unconventional um, oil and, and gas reservoirs. So for the nonlinear imaging project that we're working on, where that research is going is the uh, ability to sense remotely different fluids. That's what we would like to be able to do in the long term. Where we're at right now is really just being able to see if we can, we're, we're just looking now to see if we can see the signals. Uh, and so if we can see these sorts of hybrid signals, then we can hopefully work on inferring in the lab where different fluids are within a particular rock. The long term is to do this on the field scale. And so we have to first understand everything on the lab scale, then we have to understand how that scales. So the frequencies change, the size of the structures change, et cetera, um, and how that affects what we actually see. And then we have to understand how we can, from an engineering perspective, actually design a, a, an instrument that would be capable of doing this in the field scale without being just swamped by noise. 
So I spend a lot of time working on the computer. I do a lot of algorithm design. I also spend a fair amount of time doing paper and pencil um, type, type derivations to try and understand how you know, waves are sensitive to different properties, etc. cetera. Um, right now, I spend a lot of time talking to students and postdocs um, about their work and, and, and guiding them and, and helping them hopefully get unstuck when they're stuck. I use a lot of linear algebra, um, especially when you look at the numerical parts, that all becomes linear algebra. Um, I use a lot of signal processing. Um, even though I'm much more towards the theory end, as soon as we try and apply our techniques to, to data, the signal processing aspects become very important. Um, I use a lot of um, theory of PDEs, I guess you could say, um, but, but really it's just the wave equation. The wave equation happens to be a PDE, but I do a lot of, um, of, of work on, on the you know, theoretical properties of the wave equation, um, and so I use those sorts of tools of almost analysis. Um, I tend to use MATLAB a lot for, you know, testing little algorithms and trying to see if what I'm doing makes any sense at all. A personal perspective, one of the most challenging things that I find in my day-to-day -day life is that I work on a lot of different problems which are not directly related, and so keeping up with what everybody else is doing is, is sometimes a little bit overwhelming. But the biggest challenge with imaging the Earth is that, exactly like you said, you can't see inside the Earth. You can't drill, and so you, you can't necessarily drill as deep as you would like to or to have the information, and so there's no ground truth. And so you have to use one data set to verify what you think you see in another data set. And there is never the certainty that you know, this is what the Earth looks like. You, you can almost never say that. Um, you always say, you know, our data imply this. And so understanding the limitations of what the data imply is a big challenge. I mean, the strength of MIT is the people who are here and the uh, excitement that all of the people here have about what they're doing and also about what the people around them are doing. And that's part of the reason I came here was because that excitement was just completely tangible. Um, and it's certainly the case when you actually get here. Um, in terms of my particular field, I use the techniques of math and physics and sometimes at a very fundamental level to solve applied real world problems that, um, that our society really needs to address. And, and that, the problem that I'm thinking of that is, is energy. Um, and so that's why I do these sorts of things, is to understand how waves propagate through the Earth and understand how we can use the signals that those waves give us to infer properties of the Earth, improve our understanding of the Earth, improve our ability to uh, extract resources, and improve our ability to understand how the Earth is going to respond when we you know, apply stresses or when the when when there are, you know, earthquakes or other sorts of events like that.